Shalom and good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcast to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. Israel's outgoing premier Naftali Bennett warns Jerusalem's enemies not to challenge the Jewish state amid political instability. The IDF general staff joined their counterparts of the U.S. Central Command for war game simulations amid heightened regional tensions. Russia announces its proactive efforts to deepen cooperation with the Islamic Republic of Iran. Jerusalem's political instability should not deceive Israel's enemies. Israeli Prime Minister Naftali Bennett held a security assessment at the IDF Gaza Division headquarters, during which the commander of the IDF's Southern Command Major General Eliezer Toledano and Gaza Division Commander Brigadier General Nimrod Aloni provided the outgoing Israeli Premier with a survey of the operational situation vis-à-vis -vis the Palestinians, with chief focus on the military strategic concept regarding the Hamas-controlled Gaza Strip. הנורמל החדש בדרום זה שקט, זה ביטחון, זה חיים נורמליים. הדרום והאזור בשיא של ביקושים ומשפחות חדשות ובתים חדשים שנבנים פה. זו תמונת הניצחון האמיתית. The outgoing Prime Minister, who is reportedly considering taking a break from political life once the 24th Parliament in Jerusalem is dissolved, went on to warn the enemies of the Jewish state not to challenge Israel's preparedness. We are in a period of political crisis, but the political crisis is necessary to protect, and I don't want anyone on the other side to try to protect it. Meanwhile, in northern Israel, Defense Minister Benny Gantz addressed a salute and tribute ceremony marking the 40th anniversary of Operation Peace for Galilee. Operation Peace for Galilee, also known as the First Lebanon War, was a military operation launched by Israel against Palestinian terrorists based in southern Lebanon on June 6, 1982. The objective of the operation was to end the continuous terrorist attacks against civilians and communities in northern Israel and restore quiet to the region. The operation lasted more than three months, ending on September 29, 1982. And while Israel maintained its presence in southern Lebanon for the subsequent 18 years, Defense Minister Gantz was literally the last Israeli officer to leave Lebanon on May 24th of the year 2000, voiced the imperative necessity to maintain clear goals for any operation or war, a lesson learned from Operation Peace for Galilee, which is not limited to the state of Israel. ובהיערכות אליהן, אל המלחמות הללו, חייבים לזכור ולהציב מראש יעדים נכונים, ברורים, מהירים וברי השגה, ולחיות כל הזמן את המציאות בשטח. לדעת שיש אפשרות של שקיעה בבוץ, ולדעת לא להיכנס אליו. להיערך ליום שבו נגיע להישגים הצבאיים הנדרשים ולהמשיך משם את המערכה באמצעים דיפלומטיים תוך חתירה לשלום ויציבות. כדי שזה יקרה צריך דרג מדיני מחובר לדרג הצבאי, קבינט מתפקד, ממשלה שפועלת באחדות מטרה ומעל הכל צריך ויש לנו צבא מוכן, מאומן ומיומן. 
Jerusalem's top defense official went on to highlight that Israel's defense establishment in general and the IDF in particular are persistently working to refine the operational objectives for times of war. <laughs> משלב בין הזרועות אוויר ים ויבשה וסייבר, רוכש ומפתח אמצעים וטכנולוגיות שמשמרים את היתרון האיכותי, ואנחנו קובעים שאם נידרש למבצע בלבנון, הוא יהיה עוצמתי, הוא יהיה מדויק. הוא יגבה מחיר כבד משולחי איראן, חיזבאללה ומדינת לבנון. מליום, מול איום על אזרחי ישראל, שום תשתית שמשמשת לפגיעה בישראל לא תהיה חסינה. צריך גם לזכור שגם העורף שלנו יספוג, ולכן אנחנו מכינים אותו במיגון, בהתנהלות ובחיזוק הקשר ושימורו המתמשך בין הצבא לראשי הרשויות ולתושבים כולם. Defense Minister Gunn stressed his hope, however, that the leadership of Beirut would choose a path of peace rather than war. It is important to highlight that IDF Chief of General Staff Lt. Gen. Aviv Kochavi participated in a strategic operational forum this week for the IDF and commanders of the U.S. military's General Staff of the Central Command, as part of which the top Israeli officer provided a comprehensive security assessment of the latest developments throughout the Middle East, after which he delved into opportunities to expand the network of strategic and security cooperation. Subsequently, the senior IDF and U.S. Central Command Brass held a multi-arena war game, during which a comprehensive discussion was held on the characteristics of the operational environment of the Middle East region, as well as opportunities for cooperation with regional countries. According to the IDF spokesperson's unit, quote, the purpose of the war game was to adapt the joint operational plans as part of the IDF's transition to the area of responsibility of the U.S. Central Command. Meanwhile, Israeli Foreign Minister Yair Lapid met with his Turkish counterpart Mevlut Cavusoglu in Ankara today, during which he proclaimed that in recent weeks, the lives of Israeli citizens have been saved thanks to security and diplomatic cooperation between Israel and Turkey. The proclamation by Jerusalem's top diplomat was made after it has been cleared for publication. The Turkish intelligence recently foiled an Iranian plot, as part of which 10 Iranian agents that disguised as students and business people were detained last week on suspicion of planning targeted attacks on Israeli diplomats and tour groups in the city of Istanbul. And while the counterintelligence efforts are ongoing, Foreign Minister Lapid voiced Israel's deep appreciation of the Turkish government's activity, all the while highlighting Iran's blatant violation of Turkish sovereignty and voiced confidence that Ankara knows full well, quote, how to respond to the Iranians on this matter. Meanwhile, Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov concluded a two-day visit to Iran, where he held a string of meetings with President Ibrahim Raisi and his Iranian counterpart Hassan Amir Abdullahian. During his meeting with the former, Lavrov stressed Moscow's efforts to deepen its relations with Tehran. <laughs> банковской и финансовой сферы, в тех реалиях, которые сейчас складываются в результате эгоистичной и агрессивной политики Запада. The Russian top diplomat, during a joint press conference with his Iranian counterpart, joined Tehran's demand for Washington to remove all sanctions on the Islamic Republic, including specifically the removal of the Islamic Revolutionary Guards Corps from the U.S. State Department's designated list of foreign terrorist organizations, which is the Iranian prerequisite for reviving the 2015 nuclear agreement. We have again confirmed to our Iranian friends that we will always support their position and the need for 
полном объеме возобновить СВПД без каких-либо изъятий, без каких-либо неприемлемых довесков. И, конечно же, это предполагает отмену всех незаконных санкций. It is important to know that the call by Minister Lavrov, which was echoed by Minister Amir Abdullahian, was made merely three days after the U.S. Naval Forces Central Command condemned the Islamic Revolutionary Guards Corps Navy for interacting, quote, in an unsafe and unprofessional manner as U.S. Navy ships transited the Strait of Hormuz on June 20th. In its statement, the U.S. Navy revealed that one of the RGC naval vessels approached the USS Sirocco head-on at a dangerously high speed and only altered course after the U.S. Petrol Coastal ship issued audible warning signals to avoid collision. Thankfully, no damage or injuries were reported among the U.S. troops. Thank you for watching TV7 Israel News. Separately, it is important for us to highlight that TV7 Israel is a donation-based ministry. Therefore, if you're blessed by our productions, please consider making a financial contribution that in turn will enable us to sustain our ongoing operations. Additionally, I would like to encourage you to continue to pray for our persecuted brothers and sisters worldwide and for the peace of Jerusalem and the salvation of Israel. I'm Jonathan Hassan wishing you a Shabbat Shalom and we will see you again on Monday at the same time.